Hi everyone, I'm back with another film review. Been away for a little while, was a little bit sick, also went on a little bit of a holiday. But the main reason why I haven't been here is, um, look, there haven't been that many films which I really had a strong interest in seeing. And even the films I saw, I really didn't have anything much to say. They were just very average. But I'm back today to talk about Toy Story 4. And whenever a Pixar film comes out, there's always something to talk about. So we're going to do our usual thing. I'm going to give you the quick rundown, whether you should see it, whether you should see it in the cinema. Uh, then we're going to have a little general talk about it. And then we'll have a conversation in spoilers, although really not that much in spoilers. Um, it is a Toy Story film after all. So should you see it? You should definitely see it. I thought this was a really, really good film. And in fact, when you consider it's the fourth in the series, um, it's actually a minor miracle. The second thing is, uh, I would see it in the cinema. I mean, Pixar, just every film just gets better and better. And the animation in this is incredible. In fact, if you saw Toy Story 1 and then straight away you saw Toy Story 4, it could break your mind because the gap in the animation technique there's a scene in which it's raining in um, Toy Story 4 and wow, it's just absolutely beautiful. There's also, you've seen on the trailer, there's a carnival involved and the colors are off the charts, just really beautiful. The other thing I'll just quickly say is there are some uh, stingers. It's not like uh, seeing a Marvel film where you've got to, you know, stay because it'll have the next kind of little bit of the you know, Marvel Universe, but definitely there's some fun things there and well worth staying for. Okay, so I'll be back in a second and we'll talk about Toy Story 4. Okay, so Toy Story 4, a lot of people were a little bit, you know, angry is probably the wrong word, but because Toy Story 3 is considered, you know, really one of the better trilogies in cinema history, not just in animation, because they're all so solid, and Toy Story 3 really seemed to have a natural uh, conclusion to it. Um, when Toy Story 4 was announced, people weren't that really into the idea of it. Secondly, um, this had been a bit borne out in the box office. So most people thought it would make 150, 160 million uh, domestic, and it's coming at around 120, which is nothing to sneeze at. I actually think uh, it'll be very interesting to see this next weekend because I think word of mouth will have spread by then that this is a really, really good film and people will be going to see it. So it's directed by Josh Cooley. Now, if you don't know Josh Cooley's name, I didn't know his name. This is his debut. But as everyone, they go through the Pixar apprenticeship and he's surrounded by, you know, the geniuses uh, there like Lassiter was involved. Um, Stanton, who wrote the first three, wrote this one. So he's well supported and does a really good job. Um, I'd be very interested to see what he does, uh, maybe with something a bit more original. Um, I'm not going to list every piece of voice talent involved. You know all the normal, you know, people. It's Tim Allen, it's Tom Hanks. Um, but there are a couple of new people, so I'll talk about them. Uh, Tony Hale plays Forky. Now, Tony Hale's one of those guys, as soon as you see him, you go, oh, that guy, uh, Arrested Development most famously, but also on Veep, and uh, he's just a funny guy. Um, Christina Hendricks of Mad Men fame plays Gabby Gabby, and I think uh, Annie Potts, who you did know, but uh, has a much greater role Probably this film is really a two-hander between Woody and Bo Peep uh, as they start to look at a different way of viewing the Toy Story universe. Um, so that's really, the animation is great. The story is, I think, really, really interesting. And we'll talk about a little bit of that in the spoilers. But it is a lot about um, parenting. Woody becomes the proxy parent of Forky after Forky is made by Bonnie um, and that's got all sorts of implications. So we'll talk about that in spoilers about what are the rules for a toy being kind of alive in this universe. Um, but also it's very interesting because Bo Peep's been a lost toy, um, which we find out very quickly that she's been missing. Um, and 
Uh, that's an interesting way, very different lifestyle to Woody has always said the most important thing, the meaning of life is to be loved by a toy. The other thing I just really quickly wanted to say is that this has a pretty much a horror film in a lot of ways for kids. Same as Toy Story 3 was uh, like a war, a POW film where they've got to escape from a camp. This is a little bit similar in that it uses horror tropes. Um, the most obvious is you see Forky very early on is made by Bonnie in class. He is Frankenstein. He's a bit of a baby in the head. Um, he's an innocent. He doesn't really know how the world works. And uh, he is monstrous in that he kind of doesn't know what he's doing. Um, the other thing is Gabby Gabby. Uh, now there's a scene later on in which Gabby Gabby, uh, you know, is involved in the plot with Bo Peep. And she, people will look at her and go, that reminds me of something. And what it's reminding of, even if you've never seen it, because it was very important to early filmmakers, was uh, there was a Twilight Zone episode in which, uh, famously with Telly Savalas, with uh, a doll called Chatty Cathy and Twilight Zone. So it all goes horribly wrong. But you can see Gabby Gabby is basically a knockoff of that. And the same as she's got these ventriloquist dolls, which are straight out of a very famous uh, cult horror film called Magic, which stars a young Anthony Hopkins and Anne Margaret. And it's a great film, really affected me when I was young. And the dolls are those classic ventriloquist dolls. But they also are, um, the way that they shamble, they're like a bit zombie-ish. There's also a bit of a Sunset Boulevard vibe. This film obviously is doing a lot of things um, and I really enjoyed it. I think it operates probably more for adults than for kids in a way. Um, but let's come back in spoilers and just have a little chat about, you know, what is the meaning of life in Toy Story universe? Okay, bye. Now, the other thing before we start talking about spoilers is, and I didn't know, it's difficult to know how far you can go with spoilers, because they're not really spoilers, and probably everyone knows, but um, Keanu Reeves voices uh, a really great cameo, which is the Canadian uh, superstar stuntman, and what's his name? I've forgotten his name. Duke Kaboom. Uh, it's kind of like an Evil Knievel ripoff, uh, if you're old enough to know who that guy was. And uh, the Keanu renaissance, the Keanuissance continues. I'm a big gamer, so he's just been announced he's going to be in Cyberpunk 2077, which is, for gamers, the, the big great whale uh, coming uh, next year. And, of course, he was, you know, just in John Wick. And I come, he's in a Netflix kind of rom-com, which is kind of, I'm almost willing to check it out just on that description. So he's in it and he's great uh, as well. Uh, it really, everyone is really good. And that scene, now that we're in spoilers, which involves him, Gabby Gabby, um, and it's all really quite scary because she wants to take the voice box of Woody Allen. Oh, uh, Woody Allen. Oh, my God. Uh, he should have his voice box taken um, of Woody. And um, so it's all about this. It's really kind of body horror because it'll leave him voiceless. And what does that mean? Because the other toys don't have voice boxes. They still talk. I don't know. The one thing I did want to have a quick chat about is, uh, this film is quite interesting in that for the first time we see uh, a toy come to life, which isn't a toy. And what I mean by that is, Bonnie makes Forky in kindergarten class and well, I'm not quite sure what the magic source is which animates it. She does write her name, which seems to be a big deal, but of course all the other toys don't have their names on, written on, the, um, on their shoes or whatever. Um, she does love him, so maybe that's enough. She does play with him, which maybe moves him from the fork utensil world to toy world. I'm not quite sure. But it does mean that Bonnie is a god. <laughs> she is going around animating things. And Forky kind of half remembers that he was made. Which means 
uh, a couple of the implications, which are, do the other toys remember being made in factories? Uh, and does that also mean they're immortal so that um, really, you know, they could end up like in a garbage dump and they're really just trapped there for all of time? I guess they could move around. Um, it's kind of weird. But it also means that if Bonnie's a god, her prophet is Woody. Woody's Moses. And he's always going around saying, don't do that. We've got to do this for Bonnie. You know, we've got to follow the rules, the Ten Commandments. Um, it's just interesting stuff. I mean, I don't think, you know, people at Pixar are going, oh, this is our through line for Wood, um, Toy Story 4. But uh, I do find it interesting, uh, some of the little uh, messages they're playing with. To me, I think this film is pretty much about... Uh, there's numerous interpretations. I think it's quite interesting that there are so many. But to me, this is actually more about empty nesters and moving on. So we're in spoilers. Woody is presented with a different lifestyle that he could choose. He could go the lost toy. It's an alternate kind of lifestyle, which is championed by Bo Peep. She's out on her own. She doesn't need a family. She doesn't need a child to love her. She's okay. And she says to Woody, why don't you grow up, become a more mature toy, man, and you don't need a kid to love you. We can be uh, enough to establish our own life. Quite subversive, really, in a lot of ways. And I think it's very clever. Because if you think Toy Story 1, 2 and 3 are nearly all about nostalgia, and they're all about the tropes of growing up, and this is about being an adult and maybe even being uh, an older parent who no longer uh, has to find meaning in their life uh, different to just the rearing of their children. All good stuff. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I've got a ton of books to do and uh, I've started gaming again. So I'm going to be putting up a review as soon as I've finished of The Sinking City the new HP Lovecraft uh, game. So if you like what I'm doing, hit like, subscribe. Normally I'm putting stuff up pretty regularly, even though I've just had a break. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Guru Eden. Love to hear some comments. Talk to you soon. Bye.